Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. And today we're taking a look at two different big fixed blade choppers for camping and survival. The Becker BK9 Combat Bowie versus the Essie Hungless Machete. Let's check them out. Now while these two big choppers aren't quite the same, they do seem to get compared often enough to really warrant a comparison like this. They're both made in the USA from a classic carbon steel with bolt-on handles. They've also both gained reputations of being bulletproof options for survival or camping or anything where you would need a big, tough blade. However, as you're soon going to see, each one has its own advantages and personality, and the names of each kind of give you a little bit of a hint as to what those are. So let's dive in and see which one of these knives is best for you. All right, let's start with the similarities on the blades themselves. Each one is about 3 16 of an inch thick, and that gives you strength under pressure without them being so thick and heavy that the knives get too unwieldy. You can still easily thrash these because of their balance, but they're strong enough for chopping, batoning, or digging, or even prying in a pinch without worrying about inflicting too much damage on themselves. Now the steel on each is almost the same, and both of them do have a powder coated finish to provide protection from rust since neither of these are stainless. As I've heard Ethan Becker say on more than a few occasions, they may not be the latest secret squirrel steel out there, but they're both dependable and time proven to work. The SE uses good old 1095 carbon steel, while the Becker, made by K-Bar, uses 1095 CV. Now that CV means that there's some additional, albeit minimal, additions of chromium and vanadium over standard 1095. Now it's not really enough to affect the outright performance, it's mostly there to help with homogeneity during the heat treating process. Now on the flip side, Rowan, who manufactures Essie's blades, is regarded by many to have one of the best 1095 heat treats in the business. So in the end, there probably isn't enough of a difference between these steels in real world use to say that one is tougher or one can hold an edge longer than the other. This really is one of those cases where the distinction really makes no real difference when you're actually swinging the blades. Now as for where these knives differ from each other, of course the Hunglis does offer more length at just over 10 and a half inches versus just over 9 inches on the Becker. This means with the Hunglis you do have a little bit more swinging power, even though with the higher grind on the steel it does remove a little bit more weight from the blade itself, it's actually the handle design that helps you swing a little more effectively rather than the blade length. Now despite the reach offered on each of these knives, both are passable at smaller knife chores too. Now each has enough belly to work pretty well at skinning, especially if you use a lanyard wrapped around your forearm to support the weight of the blade while you grip right behind the point. Now for woodworking tasks like carving notches or making feather sticks, I think the BK9 balances a little bit better when you're working with those things at the heel of the blade. Now the Hunglis of course works for these tasks as well, but you are going to need to choke up a little bit more to kind of make the balance a little bit more neutral. And in that regard, I think it's kind of a shame that they don't include a finger choil on this design like they do on some of their smaller knives. It would be a real nice place for your index finger to sit, to sit and make that neutrality happen the way you want it. Now more so than the blades, the way the handles on these knives differ is even more apparent. Now the Becker is cheaper to get into right now, with a sheath comes in at about 118 and the reason for that, at least one of the reasons, is the handle material which is an injection molded synthetic. Now there are some folks out there that complain about these handles being slick, but I've not really found that to be the case for me personally when I've really worked out my BK9 because the shape, including this nice palm swell and the beak here at the back, makes it so you don't actually need extra texture to have a good grip. That said, if you want a nicer feel, K-Bar does make a set of Micarta replacement handles, which I did put on my BK9 after a while. They run about 45 bucks and with them you get the best of both worlds. You get that same excellent shape as the synthetic handles, but you do get a little bit more texture, especially when wet since Micarta tends to feel a little tackier when it does get damp. Plus if you go this route, it's still going to be less expensive than the Hoongless if you want the knife to come with a sheath. If you have really large hands though, you're probably going to want to go with the Essie. My hands aren't super big, but they are slightly larger than average, and as you can see, I have just enough room on the Becker handle, but nothing really extra to work with. The Hunglis is definitely more accommodating in that respect since it does have more length, and even though it lacks a palm swell, it's still very comfortable for me. That extra length on the handle also has the advantage of allowing you to choke back for more leverage when chopping, which I alluded to easier, and that also brings the edge angle down a little bit for more power on your swing. Both of the knives have a nice swell at the back of the handle though, ensuring that you can really put some muscle behind it and maintain a nice solid grip 
without fear of the blade going flying. Now, when we come to the sheaths, SC definitely goes more premium and offers you a full Kydex sheath, complete with a slide lock here at the top that you can slide up, and that's gonna prevent the knife from being extracted at all. It also has a nylon backer that enables belt or molly carry, and it features a snap strap here at the front. It also has a fold at the top that's secured by Velcro, and you can tuck the handle in there, and it's gonna provide even more safety. Now this is the other area where the Becker saves you a bit of money by going with a simpler yet still very effective nylon sheath. It's also got belt and molly compatibility on the back and it does also feature a snap for retention. Where it's going to pull ahead though for some is this Velcro pouch on the front. It features some space here for some other survival goodies like fire starting gear, sharpeners, a fishing kit or what have you. And it's also got a small sheath insert. And that actually fits the Becker BK-13 Remora, the small carbon steel neck knife. And that way you can easily have another tiny blade on you for those really small detail cuts without it taking up any extra room on your belt or in your pack. In the end, both of these knives are capable, hard use, large fixed blades that do indeed have a lot of overlap. But for me, the differences are subtle, but worth noting. The SE is more focused on being a pure outdoor tool, at least in my impressions. And despite the word machete in the name, it's a bit more of a heavy chopping knife. I think if you're gonna be doing machete work for hours on end, it's probably gonna leave your arms a little bit tireder than they would need to be if you were using a thinner machete. But I think if your intended uses for this blade focus more on chopping tasks, the Hoongless probably is gonna be a little bit better of a choice. Meanwhile, the Becker can still chop, but I think it's gonna be a little bit more versatile in the different types of roles that it can fulfill. In addition to the outdoor uses, as the name Combat Buoy suggests, it definitely has some tactical applications as well. And I think it's easier to manage when you do get down to the smaller nitty gritty cutting and carving jobs. Either one though is gonna be a pretty bulletproof option, figuratively of course, not literally, and will be something that you can depend on in extreme circumstances. As I mentioned earlier, the Becker is certainly cheaper to start out with, coming in at about 118, and you can always upgrade parts of it as you go. Whereas the SC is a bit more expensive, but it's got everything you want right from the start with a sheath and micarta handles coming in about 175. But I actually think that's a pretty good price where they've got it. If you took the BK9 and upgraded to micarta handles and added a custom Kydex sheath, you're probably gonna end up spending more than you would if you just got the Hoongless in the first place. But I think the Becker has a cool middle ground option where you keep the stock sheath and add that upgraded micarta handle option and that splits the difference between the two price points. Now here's the part where you let us know where you would spend your money down in the comments. And usually I leave these things open-ended and let you all decide, but this time I'm going to actually share my choice with you. Now I've actually owned and used both of these knives pretty extensively, and they've both served me very well. But I actually replaced them both with the Becker BK20 Boondock Bowie, because I thought it was sort of the perfect blend of both of these two knives. Now, as I showed you earlier, I do still have my BK9 because it was actually my very first Becker and it holds sentimental value to me, but I almost never reach for it anymore over the Boondock when I'm actually going to work. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't help you guys really because the Boondock isn't available anymore. But anyway, let us know your choices below. And if you want to get your hands on either of these cool knives, we will leave links in the description below. Those will take you over to knifecenter.com where you can sign up for our knife rewards program while you're there because if you're going to buy one of these cool knives, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.